Hello, everybody. Hello. We are back for back. episode four. 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 Sure. It's we'll definitely it's four. four. Definitely. Watch. Watch me check later, and it's like episode five. Episode four or five. Episode four or five. We'll, we'll find out. We'll all find out together. It's we'll all find out. It'll be good. Yes. Um. So we are finally doing a case from me hey. this week. Uh, last week we talked about um, the part two part of the two. Oklahoma Girl Scout murders, mm -hmm. which was so, that was a lot. That was, that a, was long a lot to process. Case. Yeah, so, it was about for joining us. It was about an hour and a half worth of content. It was a lot, but it was a party. Mm -hmm. A party to learn and figure it all out. Yeah, and I'm very excited that we're doing my case this week. Yes, thank you. All right, for so sure. we should. Get right into it. Would you like to give me a drum roll, please? Yes, I would love to. Okay, you ready? This week on the Mystery Files presents the summer tapes. We will be talking about the Summerton Man murder. Woo! You heard of it before? I think I recognize Summerton. It's, mm -hmm. Is it S O M? Yes. Um, yes, and I, I you think you probably did some research on it, maybe. Maybe I don't remember anything about it, but I recognize Summerton. <laughs> So that's all I know. Thanks. Yeah, I was so I originally intended to try to find um, one that was like about birthday parties and like murder because my birthday will be the epi the time we upload this episode mm -hmm. actually, which will be really fun. And I was like, oh, I should do a birthday episode because like it's like perfect timing, like yeah. great. But I could find nothing about birthday party murders. Like if you Google <laughs> birthday party murders, I'm sure there's stuff with like clowns or something. I can imagine there's I like should, should have looked at clowns. <laughs> Would have been. Smart. I wonder. That might be morbid. Never mind. I, 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 I won't go into another one. To say. I was gonna say you can see who like passed, who passed away on your birthday. Uh, that's what I did. I looked at murders that happened on June twenty six, and nothing came up. That's surprising. Oh, you have a good birthday then. <laughs> I do share it with uh, Ariana Grande, so oh. maybe maybe that's why. Oh. We got I mean, I guess we could make a little murder happen on your birthday. And then no, that's <laughs> it's okay. It's a murder mystery, but it's just We do that episode next year, I think. <laughs> we go, what happened to Logan the Master? <laughs> <laughs> but no, I kept looking at birthday party murders, and it was like murder mystery dinners, and like inviting people to like plan events and stuff and have dinner parties and stuff. So I was like, okay, Ooh. so party so i was like what can i do that like reflects me as a person and i love the ocean and water so let's do a case about a guy who died on the beach which uh -huh. we will get into you know, stops at the movie we watched with daniel radcliffe <laughs> it is it is it's that movie exactly i don't remember what that was called <laughs> wow that's it Bad memory. I literally don't it's remember. 824 i know that i don't remember what it was called daniel radcliffe is wa watching this right now and he's like uh, like this disappointment <laughs> all right so let's get into it <clears throat> the case of the summerton man a dead man found on australia's summerton beach continues to rattle investigators and curious minds alike to this day the well-dressed fellow sat propped up on a seawall with a half-smoked cigarette fallen onto his lapel when he was found dead and with a curious note on his person which read to mom shud which means ended or finished. Ooh, that's a little ominous. So a fun little premise. A little disturbing. So as new and ever more confounding clues regarding the case of this mystery man cropped up for days surrounding the investigation, authorities came no closer to a resolution. Indeed, seven decades onward, the truth behind the case of the Summerton man remains virtually unknown to this day. Ooh, that's a good little intro. I know. That's so good. It's so fun. I got most of this information from all allthatisinteresting.com, so check it out, guys. They were just it's definitely very helpful. It is. I'm definitely intrigued. I'm going to probably come back here for more information because it's nicely set up. Ooh, okay. So we're going to start with the discovering of the Summerton man. Okay, okay. All right. So on November 30th, 1948, at about 7 p.m. Not what? your birthday. It's not your birthday. What's the point? I know. I saw it was November and I said, great. What? They really care. Wow. And I'm sad, too, because I was originally like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to, like, because for the summer tapes, you were like, let's stick to the summer. And then I just uh, went. You went, never mind. But it's at a beach. Wait, no, that's listen, summery. listen. It's summer tin. Summer <laughs> Summer tape, summer tape. The sun. Can we can we well, call this episode on YouTube? Can we call it the sun? Just so people realize. It's for Please. The tapes. They'd be disappointed. <laughs> we'll get like dislikes. It's or, like, summer I hate somewhere this, I in think. November, though, right? 
Probably somewhere. Somewhere. Some were Tin aware. Yep. That's somewhere word. opposite to us, at least. Yeah. It would have to be. Somewhere. <laughs> Summer, summer. All right. So on November 30th at 7 p.m., John Bain Lyons, I think that's how you say it, um, and his wife strolled on Somerton Beach, a picturesque seaside resort in uh, Australia. The couple noticed a man propped up on a concrete seawall across from the crippled children's home. Uh, his legs were outstretched and his feet were serenely crossed. So this man was like up against it like this. Who would up explain against a someone's, someone's legs as being serenely crossed? Yeah, it was like, a, that was like a weird description. I was like, okay, like great. Like the rest of him isn't serene, it's just his legs. Exactly, I was like, okay, That's great. That's like saying her hair fell serenely. What does that mean? <laughs> it's just there. That doesn't make any it's sense. It's just on them. Yeah, it's a exactly. Thing. So he was dressed immaculately in a full oh. suit and polished shoes, which was unusual attire for a warm summer evening and for the beach. Summer so evening? it was warm. Oh my you know, gosh, I literally thought I said it's summer, summer, summer somewhere. Heck yeah. Is it summer in Australia? Probably. That makes sense. In November? Yeah, yeah probably. And if we have any Australian fans, let us know. Like, what know, season is it right now? Let us now? know how the world works. <laughs> Give us a geography lesson because we yeah, have no idea. I failed. Well, I didn't fail geography, but no. <laughs> I failed geography. I should have failed geography. If it wasn't for the map that literally was above my desk, I would have failed geography. I Shout out. <laughs> my teacher. I used to think Vermont was a city. <laughs> Sounds like a ski resort. So no, I was like, but I oh. get it because I for the longest time I thought places like Oklahoma were just. It sounds fake. But is Oklahoma? It's a state. But like Oklahoma's real. But real. There's a musical about it. There has well, to yeah, be. but like it doesn't seem like a state. State. You Can know? you imagine if they made a musical about like Vermont? <laughs> I don't like that. Incorrect. They go Vermont. Oh my and god. And that's a musical. That's all it is. Thanks. Amazing. All right, so the couple recalled that the man was only about 60 feet away from them when he raised his right arm and then let it fall to the ground. When so it wasn't dead. Lyons had surmised that the man was making a drunken attempt to light a cigarette. So they walked away from what they assumed was an overly, in a, in, like basically drunk man. Like, oh they were goodness. like, oh, he's, like, super intoxicated. We shouldn't, like, come talk to him. Like, oh, whatever. Goodness. Like, let's not check on him. Which is probably the wrong call. Probably not. It's not a little green dot moment. I don't agree with that. <laughs> we check on that man. So, another 30 minutes transpired, and a second couple spotted the man against the seawall. Now, his left arm was splayed out on the ground, and his face was peppered by mosquitoes. <laughs> the, the phrasing in this is just so or is it magnifique. ground cinnamon <laughs> why do you have that I wanted it for my coffee in case I wanted it you played too many games was it pepper or was it cinnamon <laughs> <laughs> with mosquitoes <laughs> my god you're welcome you were saying um, well now that you made that bit the couple joked about the mystery man must be dead to the world if he wasn't reacting to the mosquitoes. Uh -huh. So they joked about this guy being dead. And he was actually dead at that point? Well, we'll see. Oh no. The oh, next no. morning on December 1st, 1948, at around 6.50 a.m., a cluster of people on horseback surrounded the body. The same man from the night before, John Lyons, returned from his morning swim to see the crowd milling about where he and his wife had spotted the supposedly drunk man. Lyons abruptly realized that the man was now deceased. Oh snap, wait, wait, what year was this again? Uh, 1948. Okay, so, so horses, right before the 50s. So horses are normal then? Mm -hmm. Yes, horses are normal. I don't know why. As normal as going for an early morning swim. No, I just imagine like in the, in the, like, in, is it the Santa Claus and the horses are in the park. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. I imagine that, but like casually. No, these are just like, that's normal, all they had. Normal well, things on horses. Well, that's a lie. They had ladies, cars, I'm ladies. so dumb. But no, horses were way more normalized back then. That's like to weird. have as way of... Because it's, it's probably easier too because they're on the beach too. You wouldn't yeah. drive a whole car. <laughs> I mean, why not you imagine you, 
Why not? Right, gone to the beach with it. You're like, hey. Can you imagine riding a horse and seeing a dead guy? Like, come on. <laughs> Welcome to the party. So this part of the case is called Fancy Clothes and Mangled Toes. My next EP. <laughs> Fancy clothes and mangled toes. Someone put, someone put our faces like this and we're like, fancy clothes and mangled toes. Yee. Right over here. And then we'll make an album about it. We will. Stop. A Mystery Files concept album? Wait. Well, I was literally just talking about how we should have a musical episode. We should. Down. We're thinking about it. We are, for anyone that's watching, we are thinking about doing something for Halloween. We don't we know are. what yet. No we spoilers. Are, but it's going to be wild. So. We have ideas. Yeah. But we haven't really picked one but we have but ideas like, there is an idea there that are ideas you're all going to be there for because it's amazing yeah so if you're still a fan of the mystery files come october if you're still a fan in october <laughs> keep on us by then you really missing well, i don't know i don't know like what joke is going to be too far for them like yeah. on the, like they're on like the like we're they're on a string <laughs> and they're like i'm waiting you're like should i stay or should i just not but we love all the people that tune into our Instagram live. I have a coffee, so I'm gonna. <laughs> you know I love you. Wait, oh my god. Oh wait, I don't know how to hold it like that. Okay. <laughs> Trust me. That's Yay! amazing. Oh my That's gosh, great. we're friends now. Excellent. We've done that for you. I love it. All right. So an initial inspection of the Summerton man, as he will come to be known, revealed no obvious cause of death. The clean-shaven man had no stab or bullet wounds, and neither bruises nor blood were found at the scene. His death seemed passive and peaceful. But then, three hours later, the body was transported to the Royal Hospital. Dr. John Barclay Bennett estimated that the time of the death was to be no earlier than 2 a.m. The attending pathologist, John, John Matthew Dwyer, then analyzed the body, and by that time, rigor mortis had already set in. He noted that the lividity behind the ears and the neck was deep, which indicated that the body had not been moved after it had, uh, it had expired. So the body never moved from like the location that it was. He died in that spot. Ew. Mm-hmm. Get off that one thing. But what was weird was that the man was sharply dressed. He had on boxer shorts and a man's singlet, which I think is so funny. They're like, he was dressed very nice. Yeah. But he was in boxer he's shorts. He's in boxer shorts, so don't mess with I this mean, guy. I mean, how nice can he look if he's in boxer shorts? Well, he would have, like, pants on, but, like, he... Oh. <laughs> they were just like, wow, this guy is cool. Okay, he's saying that his underwear choice Yes, was... they're like, like that's wow, a good choice. Wow, boxer shorts, what a man. He also had a white shirt and a thin red tie with light brown trousers, a brown sweater, and brown double-breasted coat. It okay, sounds like you guys sounds, would get along. I'm like, I, I, heard the, <laughs> I heard the phrase brown trousers, and I was like, maybe and I then do the like sweater his outfit, thing. the sweater, the brown sweater. It That's sounds like you guys would get along. My whole aesthetic, like a corduroy moment. I don't know if it was corduroy, but I assume. Maybe brown you need fashion tips. Maybe he's you need double, to go. What was it, brown double-breasted coat? I imagine it's corduroy. <laughs> I imagine. I really hope it is, and I appreciate it. Thank you, Somerton man. I love you. So, his shoes were polished, and in his pockets, doctors found a railway ticket to Henley Beach, a bus ticket to North, uh, North Glen, and an American metal comb, a packet of juicy fruit chewing gum, Mommy. a packet of Army Club cigarettes, a handkerchief, and a packet of Bryant, Bryant and May matches. I keep matches in my purse. We're the same person. Just the essentials. Just the essentials. Just the essentials. Hello. Absolutely. We love it. <laughs> but inside the man's clothes, all name tags and maker's labels have been clipped off. One of his pants pockets was repaired with an unknown type of orange thread. Now, I know they think that's suspicious, but I cut off most of my tags too so yeah like they're just more comfortable that way so <laughs> if they're using that as evidence i don't know what are they trying to say but it is also possible maybe they didn't want like he didn't want people to know like where he got anything like give them no well the thing is if he bought all these expensive things and maybe if they, they could found, backtrack they it. found his body mm -hmm. and they're like oh maybe he stole these mm -hmm. maybe it's this maybe exactly he had his little train ticket he's trying to get out of there well, the, what was weird is he had a train ticket and a bus ticket, but they were to two opposite locations. Why? I wonder how he died then. Was it unexpected? A suicide? What was it? 
That's the fun. I'm intrigued. So many believe because of his dress and belongings, they believe that the man was American. Uh, curiously, the Somerton man had no wallet and in his breast pocket, instead, investigator Thomas Clemland later found a folded piece of paper which read, to mom should, which in Persian means ended. Oh, the words were written, like mm -hmm. the words were written in fancy script and were found to have been torn from a rare New Zealand edition of a, a 12th century work of poetry. Ooh. I'm not even going to try. Well, can I try? Can I try? It? I want, to say, like. I want to say it fancy. If you would like, get, get, get okay. your acting chops together. <clears throat> the yeah. ruby at the ball, Mark Yamid. It's pretty good. Thank you. It's pretty Someone good. Someone look up that translation. You read it very quickly. <laughs> it was good. It That's was how good. I read. <laughs> I need to open my cinnamon. <laughs> and then there's me that doesn't read at all. <laughs> you said. Rock and roll. Oh, by the way, earlier. She reads, I don't. <laughs> Summer oh, Tapes is up next. So, oh, now, wait, earlier, I just want to correct you. Earlier, <laughs> instead of saying lapel, you said lapel, and I just, I just need to, I need to appreciate that. Thank you. This is bad as, um, uh, per this is, this is not. Or perpetrators. Perpetrators. Perpetrators, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Speaking of peppered. <laughs> no. Why is this the bit you pitched for the episode? Got some cinnamon for my coffee, folks. There has to be a bit that we pitched. <laughs> Anywho, so that um, ended thing from the 20th century poetry. <laughs> right, can't read, right, right. So as for the man's body, Dwyer reported that the man's pupils were smaller and unusual, uneven in outline, and about the same size. An outline? And, what? yeah, so they were like, that's what I'm saying. Like, how do you see an outline of a pupil? That doesn't make that's sense. That's weird, though? No. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Unless weird. That's weird. They the they believe it might have been certain drugs that may be associated with the contraction of the pupils, oh. um, but it by no means is a distinguishing point for them. He mm. found that the Somerton man had blood in his stomach. Ah. He had then gone so far as to say that the blood in the stomach suggested some irritant poison, but on the other hand, nothing detectable in the food to my naked eye to make a finding. So they literally like investigated the food in his stomach and they couldn't find poison, but his like inside the stomach they found blood. Well, you see, that makes me think because I read this book this one time, I always try to find books, but I read this mm -hmm. book this one time about this person who was who inhaled bleach because they were like locked in this bathroom and they puked up blood. Ooh. So I'm wondering if he inhaled poison and that's Puked why it they, up. yeah, they didn't find then, it because ooh. he inhaled it. Oh, oh, that'd be, oh, oh, oh. I don't that's know. Scary. It's pretty weird. So this is one of the most interesting things that I think is an interesting conclusion they made. They said the man had athletic legs, though he was middle-aged, perhaps in his 40s. His forearms were tan and his toes were oddly mangled as though they had been shoved into tight shoes. Ew. So some people believe that this guy was a ballet dancer. Oh, okay, so I'm a ballet dancer, so I didn't mean to say you, but ew. Yeah, which I think is interesting, though, is yeah. that that's the conclusion they come to. I was mm -hmm. like, huh. They really thought about it. Yeah. So Thomas Clemland, uh, the coroner, later had hypothesized that there were two lethal poisons that could have quickly decomposed in the body, leaving no trace. Uh, digitalis and, hopefully I'm saying this right, stropathine. I believe in it. I think that sounds like a medical term. I don't know term. any difference, so it's correct. So either poison could have been administered to the Somerton man and decomposed before the autopsy was even performed. Oh. So there could have been no trace of that poison at oh, okay. all. Yeah, see, I was on the right track. I was like, okay, yeah. there's blood in the stomach. Yeah, exactly. And this Ooh. is the paper Ooh, that they found. I know, scary. <laughs> uh, but the results for blood and urine had indicated that nothing was amiss. The conclusion was ultimately they believed heart failure. What this meant was that his heart stopping is what killed him. What about the blood? But that the heart failure was most likely induced by okay. poison. Ah! <laughs> Whether that was self-administered or murderously given up to him, which was for police and detectives to find out. Mm. So where do you think this is heading? You think suicide or you think in like murderous plot? I don't know. I think the idea, I think it's suicide genuinely just because I feel like he didn't know what direction to choose and... Mm. Because if he had all these choices, why was he at this beach? You know what I mean? Gee, good point. I don't know. He's making crazy decisions. Unless we um 
see some theories. Oh, unless someone set it up for him, you know? They said, do this or you die. Uh -huh. <laughs> do this or you die. <laughs> they have a letter. Next, next was to run a search on the man's fingerprints, but this too yielded no new information. Neither the FBI nor Scotland Yard had the fingerprints on file. Mm. So because, like, they believe this man was American, they don't think he was from Australia, like, at all. Like, they had That's nothing so in his strange. file. So do they know where he's from at all? The That's dude? no idea. That's what they're trying to figure out. But this is where things start to get a little sketchy. So, a call was issued for abandoned property found at the local railway station. A day later, the police were notified of a brown suitcase found in the railway station. The, suit the suitcase contained the exact same thread worn by the Somerton man. This was easy to identify as the luminous, uh, as the luminous barber thread he wore was quite rare and not produced in Australia. Ooh. Further, the clothing was all in the Somerton man's size and written on a singlet, a laundry bag, and a tie was T. Keen or T. Keen. <laughs> this unfortunately also yielded no leads in identification. Oh. So his suitcase was at the railway station, but he wasn't. Oh. And he so... had a bus ticket and a train ticket. So if he got poisoned and then just like throw on the mm. beach but i want to know why he had two locations it, that's what i'm saying it's just weird that he like ended up like like there like on the beach when he was supposed to be at the railway station like what mm -hmm. how far was that from there that's what i think is oh, interesting that's so weird mm -hmm. so the clothing in the suitcase was effeminate by some accounts but also contained a stenciling brush a modified knife a screwdriver pencils and a scissors Ooh, he's either an artist or a killer or he might be into fashion. I don't know. Maybe. He might be with all his cool clothes. And Maybe. His... That's a, that's an option. I didn't actually think of that when I first read through this. Well, you see, if the, tags, were, the, fashion. If the tags were cut out of his clothes, maybe the tags weren't there in the first place mm. because he made them. Ooh, he's a seamster. <laughs> I don't think it's actually. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. He's on Project Runway now. Thank you. Oh, my God. He's winning season 20. Miss Summerton, man, you have been eliminated. <laughs> he goes, come on. And then he does this on the beach. He goes. <laughs> Peppered. Peppered. What if the little um what were they <laughs> moths mugs? Moths. Moths. What if they would look like freckles? Mm-hmm. They weren't moths, they were mosquitoes. Oh oops. Yeah, that's a big difference. I just can't I just don't understand. Back to that, like backtrack real quick. I cannot believe four people, two couples, saw this man have mosquitoes all over his face and they didn't say anything. Yeah. Like, they just kept going with their day. That's like seeing, like literally seeing a dead body and going, eh, no, God, they'll find it eventually. They're like, oh, that's not my problem. And then the same guy the next day went swimming. Like, nothing was there on the They're beach. They're like, ah, it went, the pool was chill. It's just, it's so confused. Wait, it's not like the Lord of the Flies cover. It's not the cover, like, with the flies on the kid's face. Or am I crazy? Or did I draw that? No, like I think that? you might be right. But it's Vaguely, I'm remembering 10th grade. Yeah, whatever year that was. <laughs> the 10th year. Um... All right, so meanwhile, the world was notified of the strange case of the Somerton man, and several months later, a gentleman walked into the detective's office with a copy of the elusive book from which Tamam should, a phrase likely to appear on the last page of the book, have been ripped. Ooh. In December of the previous year, the man reported he had taken a drive with his brother-in-law in an automobile that he parked a few hundred yards away from Somerton Beach. Oh, snap a -rooney. So that means there is a comp there is a third party involved that had mm -hmm. the book and was not involved with them. So they're the killer or they helped set up the murder. Mm hmm So when they returned to the car, the brother-in-law noticed a peculiar book now lying on the floor of the car. Both men had assumed the book belonged to the other and it was cons consequently deposited in the glove department. But when the national coverage of the Summerton man had begin, begun to circulate, the two men took a look, closer look at the book. They quickly realized that they had the exact copy of the book with one page at the end torn out. Oh. So there is two copies of this book now, with one of the pages turned out where Tamar Shud was. I meaning don't know. The what if that person isn't even in on it? They could be lying, too. They could be lying. Like, it might be someone trying to set them up, or... Mm -hmm. 
someone they think could try to figure it out like it's a mystery they're mm -hmm. like okay keep this take this out of this book do this little thing it's like a whole mystery for them to solve but that's that's what makes this case interesting we're about to get into that because what? because you were talking about how you think oh it's just probably like a regular suicide but the more and more information comes out it seems like someone was leaving clues unless it was him he loves Ooh. mysteries. He decides he's going to do this. Somebody solved the mystery of my murder, which was suicide. Unless he knew he was dying, and so he decided to want to do it himself. It's the plot of a movie. What movie? I can't say. The one I just recently watched. Wait, uh, wait, can I know? Yeah. Oh! oh, oh <laughs> don't I, say anything, I'm literally don't say anything. so dumb. I'm not going don't to, but I'm literally so dumb. Okay. <laughs> That's literally the plot of that movie. Wow! <laughs> Figure it out in the comments. But don't. <laughs> but don't. But tell us. If you haven't seen it. But you have like... any guesses. They give us guesses. Movies we haven't seen. We get really mad. <laughs> because you jerks. We hate you. <laughs> They're like, you did it first. You're banned from the Mystery Files viewing party. <laughs> You're banned. We're going to block you from the YouTube channel. Block you from don't do that. Channel. Don't do that. Our fans are going to think we hate them so much. JK, we love we you love so you. much. Go watch the movie. If you know what it is. If you know what it is. <laughs> So, Detective Sergeant Lionel Lean, which is a very long wow, name. Wow, that's pretty. I like yeah, that. he's a detective and a sergeant. Lionel, All right, go on. Uh, <laughs> took a close look at the book. It revealed two unlisted phone numbers in lines of code. The first number was a dead end, but the second phone number led to a young nurse that lived on Somerton Beach, known only as Justin. Her name was never revealed to the general public. Justin had claimed to not know the Summerton man, but she almost fainted when she saw a cast of the Summerton man's face. What do you mean? Why? I don't know. She like fainted when she saw like a picture of like his dead body, which I mean is kind of a lot, but yeah. like from the pictures I saw, they're not like horrifying. So why would she like almost pass out from the sight of that unless she know. might know them, I'm you know? I don't know. What if she doesn't know him and it's like some like weird paranormal thing? Mm-hmm. Ooh, I don't like that. So Justin was reluctant to speak to the police, though she eventually admitted to having a gifted copy of it to a man named Alfred Boxwell. I love these names. Yeah, they're pretty good, oh, honestly. Right? That's a good name. Usually in the mystery files we judge most of everyone's names because we're really so fast silly. Dumb. What a silly name. But Australia's doing pretty good. Australia, keep it up with the names. Keep it up with these awesome names. We're liking them. Alfred Boxel, how cute. Yeah. Uh, so when the police pursued this lead, they discovered that Boxel was indeed alive and still had Justin's copy in his possession. Mm -hmm. So dead end there, not the same guy. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the message that they found on their... We'll probably oh, post it. It's just a bunch of random video. letters if you're intrigued. Yeah, it literally, like, it's just, like, a bunch of random letters. And there's so no, weird. like, true way to find it. We go, what, it's spelled. Wooka -da -ba -da. So, detective work. All detectives know. They put it under a black light. And the book revealed another strange code. Five lines of letters were found with the second of which crossed out. The first three were separated from the last two by a pair of straight lines with an X written over them. Oh. But naval intelligence was unable to decipher the code, so the lines were published in newspapers for amateur code breakers to tinker with. Wow, is this the Zodiac? And that's what I was thinking. I was like, this is literally like exactly what happened with the Zodiac. Wow. It's like a code that no one understands. This is definitely no one set can. up. If it's set up by the guy who actually died or someone who killed him. Exactly. It's too specific. It's like they, they intersect way too much for it to be mm -hmm. anything else. Yeah. That's whack. And literally like the code is just like, <laughs> it's like W or maybe M. R-G-O babati di bamana in a tip. Wow, you wrote that. Milabio, A A Q C, Itamasam Ga. Wow, that's actually real. He's pretty close. While I'm looking at the letter. Right? Yeah, I'm pretty wow. close. You're I'm pretty, pretty close for pronunciation. Take that grammar. Take that grammar. What you gonna Take do, that grammar? Lapple. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? What you gonna do? What you grammar Lee's like. This video is sponsored by. <laughs> I wish. I wish. Wait. Only sponsor us. Let's reach out to them. You think they're gonna sponsor us? <laughs> Maybe if we yeah. ask nicely. I go, I use you all the time. Here I up. use you all the Actually, time. Actually, I use word Except for more. during my show. I use Give word me counter. money. Money. <laughs> <laughs> so the police then decided that it was at last time to lay the Summerton man to his final rest on June 14th, 1949. Close to your birthday. I know. Oh my so gosh. it's a little close. Happy almost birthday. Happy almost birthday. Wait, what's today? Stop it. 
What's the date right it's, now? It's the 24th. Wow, I literally don't know what day it is. <laughs> Oh my god, why did I think it was a It's the 24th of day of shooting. <laughs> Wait, why did I not know we were that far into June? I almost said July. I don't know. No, so we no. passed the Summerton's like peaceful, peaceful death. Uh, when the South Australian coroner published the final results of his investigation in 1958, which is like 10 years later, his report concluded with the admission, I am unable to say who the deceased was, dot, dot, dot. I am unable to say how he died or what the cause of the death was. Oh. So the police in itself, corny enough, defined the case as to mom shed. Ew. Meaning it ended. I don't like that. Mm -hmm. No, keep looking. You can't so, just say it ended when a guy is dead and they don't know what happened. So what are your thoughts so far? What are you thinking? I don't know. I truly think it's interesting that he set it up. Mm -hmm. I don't know. He seems like a set scholarly. Set up his own code. Yeah. Like if he knew he was going to die. Like I think that's a cool thing. It's an interesting, it's an interesting thought. I think it'd be fun. Mm -hmm. Because then it would be, it would add to the mystery of like, why did he have these two different locations? Because I just don't understand why, if it was someone else, why would they go out of their way to buy two tickets? Yeah, exactly. Two different and then places. This case is like on the ground at the railway station. It seems like he went through a lot of work to set this up if he did set it up. Mm -hmm. Or was he taken? Did it say what two places that the tickets were to? Um, yeah, I would have to go back to look, but... I'm intrigued, because so I'm like, I wonder if they have any correlation with each other. I'm just like... That's what? the fun of this. We're like little detectives, we're like, wait, like, what are I we... know. I'm like, I mm -hmm. want to know what the reasoning behind these things are. Well, I wanted to ask because we have a couple of theories to get into. Whoa. It's theory time! I love theories. The favorite of times. Wow. So, in recent years, uh, the Summerton Man has become, like, really popular again because they closed the case, like, over almost now, like, 70 years ago. So they wow. really don't know, like, what could have possibly happened. But with everything going on and, you know, like modern technology and whatnot, like mm -hmm. a lot of people have been trying to figure out what could have happened. And the phrasing like to mom should has become very popular amongst like theorists. So a lot of people really want to figure it out. Mm -hmm. So the first popular theory, which is the easiest one, is that the Summerton man killed himself after being rejected by Justin. It was oh. also discovered that Justin had a young son who could have actually belonged to the Summerton man due to similarities in their appearance. Ooh. Investigators uh, said that the faced by life without his burgeoning family, the Summerton man decided to end it all. Wait. So, so that's why Justine went, oh, when she saw my man. No, listen. If what? you saw your lover dead, I'd be, I'd be on the ground. But I'd be what if? Out. What if? She found out that she was pregnant, but they had already broken up and she didn't want to see his face and she refused to let him see the baby. Mm -hmm. And then he got mad and he was like, I'm ending it all. You don't love me. Yeah. Ah, and then this, this theory appeared the most attractive to investigators due to the apparent lack of defensive wounds on the man's body, which would have suggested a fight or a murder. Also, the Tamam should note was solely connected to Justin and no mm -hmm. one else. Lastly, no poison was found in his body, which indicated the Summerton man most likely self-administered the poison, if at, at all. Wow. Mm -hmm. My goodness, this man. Yeah, I think that's a pretty fun one. Honestly, yeah. like, Justin being the one, like, maybe like, they got into a like, huge fight or something mm -hmm. whenever she found out she was pregnant. Mm -hmm. And then, boom, he was gone. She had to raise like, a kid by herself. You can't be in my baby's life because... Can you imagine? ABC. That'd be drama. That is drama. That is drama. That's like a good little little TV show or something. Yeah. The second theory, the very like the what I would say is more fun. Oh. Uh, it is a little more provocative. Is that people believe the Summerton man was a spy that knew too much. Ooh. Okay. The spy theories. I love that. Uh. His death was so unusual and the poison doctors thought he could have used was not at all common. That the poison was potentially so deadly and unknown that it could kill a man and then disappear from his body within hours so that no medical testing could trace it, suggesting the Summerton man was a well-connected person. 
Oh. Meaning they think that spies had a type of poison that, like, even, like, medical examiners don't even know about. Oh, snap. Like, a secret drug that could kill someone like that. Like, cold case. Wait, and he could have even been afraid they were following him. Mm -hmm. And that's why he had the two different things. And then he hit yeah. out on the beach or something. And why was he... Because if you go back... Because if you go back to the beginning of the case... We know that he wasn't like screaming for help or anything. Yeah, like, he was, he just was like, he was just like, hey, and they thought he was like really drunk, but that might have been where he decided to have his final resting place, mm -hmm. which could also explain why he had so many different locations set up. Oh. So he'd be untraceable. Mm -hmm. Might be a theory. What do you Justin is in comparison though? But what gives more proof to this theory also? is that no one claimed his body, despite the case having been published throughout the entire world. Plus the indec indecipherable code and co-founding nature of the meaning to mom should lent themselves to the theory that the Somerton man was a spy, someone so powerful or insidious that they wanted him dead. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Snapperoonie, my dude. So what, what, what's, what's like crazy about this is that there's still clues being found to like this day. A retired Australian policeman, Ooh. Gary Feltis, author of the only book yet published on this case, discovered in his own investigation that in 1959, a witness came forward saying they had seen the Somerton man being carried on the shoulder of another man onto the beach and left where he was later found. Oh, snap. Mm -hmm. I hope that's true. I really hope that's true. Mm -hmm. That's weird. Ew. Yeah. And then it gets crazier, like storyline, just to like bottle this up real quick. The oh. investigation has also been picked up by none other than Justin's own daughter. Oh, And she gosh. firmly believes that the Somerton man is her grandfather and that he and her mother were involved in the Soviet spy ring. What? I mean, I believe her. Yeah, her that's mother. a good, that's a strong theory, I, I mean, think. she'd have to know who her mother is, so maybe her mom talked to her like, about stuff about it. Yeah, because it's like, they're in the family together, how would she, like, come to that conclusion? Like, I'm not yeah. thinking about my grandma right now, I'm like, you were in the Soviet spy ring! Even my mom, if mm -hmm. you were to believe that one of your parents was a spy, I'd probably believe you, because you'd know more than I would. Yeah, exactly, it's just, it's so crazy, like, Ooh, it's just like putting a spin on everything. Mm -hmm. So now we know that, like, some witness in 1959 came forward and they saw him being carried. Mm -hmm. And we're talking, like, over the back. Shoulder. Yeah, over the shoulder. Oh, no, that's it was definitely like, something set up because it, yeah. if he was limp enough that he was able to be carried over someone's shoulder, yeah. he was already, like, and that's what makes the theories. Poison. That's what makes the theories crazy because adding to, like, the fun of, like, trying to figure out, like, was it, like, a suicide and he was trying to get away from other spies or if someone like tried to kill him, mm -hmm. it's still weird that he was like, his legs were like crossed and oh he was like gosh. up against it. Cause if he were to be like poisoned to the point where he couldn't move, someone would have had to put him into that position. Ew, to make mm -hmm. him look like casual, like he was just sitting yeah. on the beach. Yeah, exactly. Well that's why he could like get away with just being chill on the beach that entire time. Exactly. They're like, oh, he's just enjoying the sunshine. Yeah, so now Justin's daughter has requested that the Somerton Man case be reopened and re-examined over wow. 70 years later to figure out what happened to him. Um, yeah, so what people believe now is that it is to mom should. Ew! <laughs> Gross! Yeah, like nightmares that just go to mom should. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah. what do you think? Where's where are your, where are your theories lying? Where's Well, theory? I definitely really like the spy idea. I think I like I spies. definitely think it's that because the more that I think about the other guy. theories, the code wouldn't make sense. It had to have been someone who had experience with code things and spies are very codey. So Yeah, exactly. Like it's just it's like everything's just too like like strangely set up for it mm -hmm. to just be like a simple suicide yeah. that they originally thought. And also, suicide is the easy answer. Yeah. That's always the easy answer. In moments like this. And I'm like, there's too many little things that yeah. lead us to believe it's not. Yeah, exactly. And, like, down to the point of, like, they found, like, blood in him, which means that there was poison, but they couldn't find poison. Mm -hmm. 
that's scary. Like, what if there's poison like that still out there to this day? Mm -hmm. And also, like, the other thing is that if it does get reopened and they're able to re-examine those records or, like, find something, maybe it's, like, a medical thing we didn't know about and we have now. Oh. Because modern medicine has come a long way, too. We gotta so find it all. Let me know. see if it's Justin's yeah. daughter's grandfather. That's a lot to say, but yeah. yeah. So I guess the only thing we can say is that the Somerton man remains a mystery. mystery. Yes. Yeah, and they really peppered in those. How'd I do? How'd I do? Even though it wasn't a birthday murder. What, what I are think we thinking? it was pretty great. I don't know. <laughs> I really liked it. Thank you. I enjoyed you. it. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Happy almost birthday. Thank you. Yeah, um, of course, of course. I'm so All right, so we will see you guys in a couple of weeks for Tiffany's turn yet again. Oh, yet again. Look at that. Wow, what a chance. That's okay. I, I like the cases you pick, so it is Thank, fun wow. for me. You're like, somewhat, somehow I actually enjoy the cases No. I mean. I think it's fun when I get to do mine because I drop like bombs. I'm like, boom. Like, listen to this. And it was her daughter. And then I'm like, go. <laughs> Not what I was thinking. All right, we will see you guys in a couple weeks for Tiffany's mystery. Hey, and make sure to check us out on YouTube, my yes. dudes. Yes, yeah, check so, us out on YouTube. Our yeah. Instagram is the mystery files underscore. Yeah, but we post our videos up there on YouTube. Yes. So just give them a little watch if you want to give us a little subscribe. So yes. yeah, thank you guys. All right, bye, bye. guys.